sharing of optical instruments, ranging from a simple magnifying glass to the eye to a cameras zoom lens. In this section, we will use the law of refraction to explore the properties of lenses and how they form images. The word lens derived from the Latin word for a lentil leaf. Lens is a careful brown or molded piece of transparent material that refracts lightly in such a way as to form an image. Lenses serve to refract light at each boundary. As a ray of light enters a lens, it is refracted, and as the ray of light exits the lens, it refracted again. The net effect of the refraction of light at these two boundaries is that the light ray has changed directions. Because of the spherical geometric shape of a lens, the light rays are refracted such that they form images. One of the most important devices in optical instrument is the lens. You can find different types of lenses in eyeglasses, medical instrument, telescope, magnifying glasses, binoculars, cameras, and microscope. A lens is a transparent object bounded by one or more curved surfaces. The curved surfaces may be spherical, parabolic, or cylindrical. Of these three, the most common is the spherical type. Lenses are different form of prism. Lenses are different form of prism, which is planar on all sides. Light is refracted by both lenses and prism as it enters and again as it emerges from them. Light entering and leaving the lens undergoes various changes because of the curvature of the lens surfaces and the different materials which have different degrees of refractivity. One advantage of using lenses is the facts that light rays come from any one point of an object and incident upon a lens with a convex curvature may be brought to a focus or single image point. The larger the lens, the better the focusing and the brighter and the image point. There is a stream of light which passes through the lens from all the points of an object. These focal points have exactly the same position relative to one another as to the corresponding points on the object. There is then an exact reproduction of the body as an image, just as in the used mirrors. Except that this time, it is phenomena of light transmitted through a transparent body than of light reflected. As in mirrors, images form are real or virtual depending on whether or not the light rays actually pass through the photo points or nearly seem to do so. Real images can be projected on the screen just like a mirrors. Lenses are mostly made of glass or plastic. There are two kinds of lenses commonly used, converging and diverging. Converging lenses are those which are thicker in the middle than they are at the edge. In figure on the right, there are three different forms of convex lenses. Note that the radius of curvature is the same for both surfaces of the double convex lens, but different for the two curved surfaces of the converging meniscus or convex meniscus. When a wave front enters the convex lens, the central part of the wave enters the lens first and slows down to the greater optical density of the glass. The edge of the wave front, however, is still advancing through the air with the same speed moving ahead of the slowed down center. As the bent wave front penetrates the lens, the edge of the wave emerges first through the inner part of the lens and regains its original speed ahead of the middle part of the wave front, which is still inside the lens. This bends the wave further to a concave front and converges at a point beyond the lens, the real principal focus step of the lens. In contrast to converging lenses, diverging lenses are thicker at the edges. The double concave lens and the plane of concave lens in the figure are flat lenses. The convex or concave or concave meniscus lens is a diverging meniscus lens. The effect of a diverging lens on a wave front is opposite that of converging lens. The edge of the wave front enters the lens ahead of middle and slows down bending the wave front backwards. When 
the middle part of the wing emerges first through the thin part of the lens. It bends even more and seems to diverge from a point in the front of the lens. The virtual principle focus F of the lens as seen in the picture. Convex curvatures have a converging effect upon rays of transmitted light, while concave lenses have a diverging effect. In general, the effect of refraction by lenses is to bend the light rays over the bigger part of the lens. Now let's talk about lens terminology. Number one, center of curvature. Spherical lenses have two centers of curvature unless they are of the plane type. The centers of curvature are the centers of two intersecting spheres which form the lens surfaces. Number two, principal axis. The axis is the line that joins the two centers of curvature. In figure, we will see that C that C prime. Number three, principal focus. The principal focus F is the point where rays of light parallel to the principal axis converge after being refracted by the lens. Number four, optical center. The optical center mode is the geometrical center of the lens through which the secondary axis pass. Any light going through the optical center does not noticeably get refracted. Number five, the focal length. The focal length or F of the lens is the distance from the principal focus to the optical center. In optometry and ophthalmology, the reciprocal of the focal length is equal to 1 all over F is used to express the refractive power B of eyeglass or contract lenses. In symbols, we have B is equal to 1 all over F. The unit for lens power is either raised to negative 1 or doctor. Forming images with lenses is almost the same as forming images in mirrors. You can take any two rays coming from the object and locate their image point just in day with mirrors. These are, however, a few differences. One, the secondary axis couldn't pass through the center of curvature but through the optical center. Number two, depending on the kind of glass used for the lens, the principal focus will be found at the center of curvature. This will result in focal length of the double convex lens equal to the radius of curvature. Number three, since the rays of light pass through the lens, a real image is formed on the other side of the lens opposite the object. Virtual images are formed on the same side as the object. In mirrors, the real object is found on the same side of the object, while virtual images are formed behind the mirror. Number four, convex lenses behave like concave mirrors. Well, concave lenses form images like concave mirrors. Now let's talk about image formed by convex lenses. We have some rules to follow. Number one, parallel rays of light are refracted or bent through the F point. Number two, rays of light passing through the center of the lens travel straight on. Number three, the position of the top of the image is where refracted rays and rays of light passing through the center meet. Let us look at this first case. Rays emitted by a very distant object, like the sun, will reach the lens in almost parallel lines. In such a case, the rays will be formed at the principal focus as a mere point. The concentration of rays at the principal focus makes the lens useful as a burning glass because of the extreme heat generated. Looking at case number 2, we can notice that as you place an object on F point, the image result will be at infinity. In case number 3, we can notice that the object put on 2F position will produce an image that is on the 2F prime position. It is inverted and has the same size and it is considered to be real. In case number 4, an object is placed between 2F and F position. Now, we can see that the image form is outside the 2F prime, larger in size, inverted, and considered to be real. Now let's look at case number 5, where we put our object between the lens and the F point. We can see that the image formed is on the same side of the lens, larger in size, 
it is spiritual and erect. Now for case number six, we put the object outside the 2F position. The image that was formed is between F prime and 2F prime. It is reduced in size, inverted, and considered real. Let us now talk about the image formed by concave lenses. And still, we have some few rules to follow. First, parallel rays of light are bent away or refracted from the near F point. Second, rays of light passing through the center of the lens travel straight on. Now, in this figure, we can see that if you place an object in front of a concave lens at any place, the result will still be the image is at the same side of the lens and always be reduced in size, erect, and virtual. Now, let's talk about lens equation. The same equation used in spherical mirrors for the relationship of size of image and size of object are applicable to lenses. And we can express that as S sub O all over D sub O is equal to S sub I all over D sub I. Where S sub O is equal to the size of the object, D sub O is equal to the distance of the object from the lens, S sub I is equal to the size of the image, and D sub I is equal to the distance of the image from the lens. The relationship of D sub O, D sub I, and F or the focal length in concave and convex mirrors can also apply to lenses. This is now called the lens equation. We can express that as 1 all over d sub o plus 1 all over d sub i is equal to 1 all over f. For virtual images, d sub i is negative and for diverging lenses, both f and d sub i are negative. For example, an object is 7.62 cm tall and is 50.8 cm from a double convex lens. A real image is formed 25.4 cm from the lens. What is the size of the image? What is the focal length of the lens? Give the location of the image and describe the image. We have given that S sub O is equal to 7.62 cm D sub O is equal to 50.8 cm, D sub I is equal to positive 25.4 cm. For letter A, we can solve that using the equation S sub O all over D sub O is equal to S sub I all over D sub I. Manipulating that equation, we have S sub I is equal to S sub O multiplied by D sub I all over D sub O will give us S sub i is equal to 7.62 centimeters multiplied to 25.4 centimeters all over 50.8 centimeters will give us the final answer 3.81 centimeters. For letter B, we can use the equation 1 all over d sub o plus 1 all over d sub i is equal to 1 all over f. f is equal to d sub i multiplied by d sub o all over d sub i plus d sub o. Substituting its value, f is equal to positive 25.4 centimeters multiplied to 50.8 centimeters all over 25.4 centimeters plus 50.8 centimeters will give us the answer 16.933 centimeters or approximately equal to 16.9 centimeters. For question letter C, the image at 25.4 centimeters will be between the F point, which is 16.9 centimeters, and 2F point, which is equal to 33.8 centimeters. For letter D, this is like case number 2. This image will be real, inverted, smaller than the object, and on the opposite side of the lens. Thank you very much for watching. We hope that you learned. See you on our next topic. Bye!